Hi, I'm Naomi. I'm Katie. Welcome to Lots of TV Gaming News, bringing you all the game news straight from South Korea. Despite the future of Nexon still being up in the air, it appears to be business as usual for now, as the company released its new RPG, Spirit Wish, last week. Spirit Wish is the first title from Nexon's subsidiary Neon Studio that was founded in 2013. The mobile RPG is set in a genre classic fantasy world in which players control a team of three characters to explore, raid and do all the typical RPG fare you would expect. The game first went into closed beta in October last year and was officially released for both Android and Apple devices on the 17th last week. Spirit Wish is available to download on the Korean Google Play and App Stores today. And while there's still no word on a buyer for Nexon, the company is continuing to make announcements with a new game based on the Japanese anime Revisions, Next on the Cards. Revisions is the latest offering from Goro Tanaguchi, the director of Code Geass. The time-bending story follows a student who was kidnapped as a child and thrown 300 years into the future to fight alongside those known as Revisions in their battle against giant robots. The series has been airing on TV in Japan and worldwide via Netflix since January 10th. Nexon's DevCat Studios has announced that they will be creating a game based on the anime called Revision's Next Stage, and has scheduled its launch for summer 2019. And an MMO update news, the latest content update Surehold went live in Onmas' Terra on the 15th. With previous updates introducing new classes and fishing systems, Terra has returned to its battle routes with Shorehold, a content update focused around PvP. Its main feature is the new 7 vs 7 PvP Battleground, which serves as the update's namesake as well as the new PvP gear sets. But for those less PvP inclined, the update also offers new PvE content, with a new training ground and the return of the Sanguinary Dungeon. Surehold is live and available to play today. If you're looking to try out a new Korean PC title, then good news, because Tino Games' Neoverse is now available on Steam. Neoverse is a strategic, roguelike deck building action game, with three distinct characters with unique gameplay styles to choose from. The game features over 300 strategic cards, 100 skills and 70 types of monsters to face, and has drawn some favourable comparisons to Mega Crit Slay the Spire. Neoverse is currently in early access and available for download on Steam today. And the wait is finally over. PUBG's newest Snowstream Lab Vikendi has gone live on PS4 and Xbox One Live servers today. Vikendi first went live on PUBG test servers back in December. To say it made a splash would be somewhat of an understatement, particularly here in Korea. PUBG had been on a downward trend since early last year, but Vikendi's arrival left key popularity indices by around 20% and also saw a dramatic increase in the amount of average hours per week the game has been played in PC bunks. And now everyone's favorite map has officially graduated from the public test service and has gone live on console. Enjoy! After weeks of watching Titans dominate, fan favorites return, underdogs making valiant runs all the way to the semi-finals, and what seems like roster changes every other day, Contenders Korea Season 3 has finally ended. The tournament came to a close at last weekend's Grand Finals, where defending champions Runaway defended their title against the bridesmaids of the Korean Overwatch scene, Element Mystic. Things started out strong for Element Mystic on Busan, taking an early lead in the Sanctuary, with Sparkle on his famed Doomfist pick. Despite Kang Namjin fragging out in the mecha base, Element Mystic did bounce back in downtown, taking the first point of the best of seven. Numbani continued to be close as both teams completed the map and the game was pushed to extra innings, but on Element Mystic's final push, Hisu Sombra pick proved fatal, with the EMP completely derailing them and starting their stagger back to cart. In the end, Runaway edged it out, finishing 5-4 and tying it up 1-1. But Horizon Lunar Colony saw Runaway begin to break away, holding Element Mystic with an insane 7 minute defense on point B. Runaway went on to take the map with 3 minutes 38 seconds to spare. Runaway continued the momentum on Dorado, holding Element Mystic after one checkpoint and using a quick Roadhog flex out of spawn and a huge shatter from Mag to push back Element Mystic and take the map. And by the time they hit Lijang, Runaway was fully activated, with QOQ's clutch bombs earning them a quick 2-0 map win, and thus the title. Which means the new Runaway squad has managed to uphold the legacies of their predecessors, both winning contenders and breaking things along the way. Everyone knew the Tier 2 scene was undergoing some serious revamps going into 2019, but it seemed to be a given that Korea's contender scene would remain untouched, given its pre-league established presence and how much it thrives in comparison to its international counterparts. Alas, it seems that it was not a safe assumption to make, as rumours have begun to rise that Contenders Korea will be run as an online tournament in 2019. 
There has been no official confirmation yet, but here's hoping that this is proven to be unfounded. It would be a real loss for the competitive scene if this change were to go through. As always, we'll keep you posted. Online or offline, teams are already preparing for the fight in 2019, with O2 Team and Stormquake announcing a merger, competing in 2019 as O2 Blast. Interestingly, they seem to have gone for an O2 plus Kaiser scenario, which is odd considering Stormquake reached the semi-finals in Season 3 and the O2 roster finished at the bottom of Group A. However, they have listed two positions as unconfirmed and stated that they will be announced in the future once final decisions are made. Fingers crossed for the Stormquake boys. And Blossom's surprisingly rare recruitment notice from last week suddenly makes more sense as it was announced that ANS will be retiring from professional Overwatch. He joined the team in March 2018, and whilst they haven't had a stellar record, his widow certainly gave us some glimmers of hope whenever he was subbed in. ANS, you will be missed. There's no event this week, but if you guys know about anything coming up, please let us know in comment below. See you guys on next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.